Something weird is happening in the world of e-commerce. While brick and mortar retail stores crumble and die, a new wave of retail stores are popping up and redefining the market. But first, here's what you need to know from this last week in Amazon and e-commerce news. U.S. business owners need to learn something from the United Kingdom. Those business owners know what they're doing. Did you know that the United Kingdom is the happiest kingdom when it comes to buying products online? In mobile marketing magazine, Tyrone Stewart tells us why. These UK retailers prioritize the customer experience. They personalize the experience from the moment the shopper lands on the site to months after they purchase the product. Now, here are three strategies you can apply right now to your e-commerce online store. Number one, set up your website to recommend products based on the shopper's last browsing patterns. Number two, make it dummy level easy for the shopper to create their own account so that when they return to your website, they're not fumbling with forgotten passwords. Number three, follow up with the customer after their purchase, nurturing loyalty through tactics like giving them a discount coupon, inviting them to an online platform of customers with similar interests, sending helpful tips and tricks on how to use the product or even getting them on an email list of weekly, well-written, curated, interesting blog posts. If you love this content, I got one request. Just click the subscribe button below. And if you have a question, you ask it below, I will answer your question. Retail Touchpoints came out with great advice and deadly advice for every Amazon seller. Vincent Vu came out with an article for six ways teaching you how to elevate your Amazon brand. And his article reminds me yet again why you must be in the business to know the business before you can ever teach the business. Now, I'm gonna give you these six points quickly. Number one, optimize your listings, excellent. Number two, create robust storefront, absolutely important. Number three, consolidate reviews and variations, yes sir. Number four, get external blogger sites to get traffic to your e-commerce website, absolutely. Number five, always research new products, amen to that. Number six, get a fast trademark for brand registry, don't do it. This can get your account suspended. What happens is people will try to trademark their brand through a country like Germany because trademarks are boundary nation exclusive. They're limited based on that country. And you can get a trademark in Germany in as fast as three months. And then you go in, you apply for brand registry. The problem is later Amazon can come back and remove you and your selling privileges from their platform because you tried to use a trademark from Germany to sell in the US on amazon.com. These shortcuts work for a while, then Amazon figures it out, and then before the majority know it, all of a sudden, all these accounts are getting suspended. And that is deadly advice, don't do it. Amazon is building a new publisher tool for influencers. So what do Colette Prime, Dr. Organic Mommy, and Cocktail Chemistry all have in common? They are influencer-driven brands with Amazon storefronts. And according to Allison Weisbrot, quote, Amazon is developing a publishing tool that will allow influencers to easily port their social media content, even static images and videos from channels like Instagram and YouTube directly to their Amazon storefront, end quote. Amazon has never done this before and they have not even yet begun to scratch the surface of the influencer market potential. You need to get your own influencers. You need to build your brand. You need to make Amazon want you because they are just beginning and they're not doing it that well yet. In fact, a lot of third-party Amazon sellers are doing it better with a thousandth of the funds, not anything close to the same number of staff, but they're doing it because like Guerrilla Warfare, they are hustling and Amazon values those who bring a brand to their platform. They roll out the red carpet and say, okay, what can we do to serve you? So instead of looking at Amazon as, oh, this is a place where I'm gonna get my opportunity, look at it as, how can I make Amazon, the biggest online re retailer in the world, want me badly? Alibaba's chairman sets out to reinvent retail. It's actually happening. And Daniel Zhang, who is following the steps of his predecessor, Jack Ma, is now the chairman of Alibaba. He spent months in an underground garage in the city of Shanghai, planning how to reinvent online retail. It goes like this, according to Bloomberg. Combine a grocery store and a restaurant and a delivery app using robotics and facial recognition to speed up your logistics and your payments. 
Now, while most new chairmen would spend their time trying to fill the shoes of their predecessor, Daniel is spending his energy making sure Alibaba does not get replaced. This is the mindset of a true entrepreneur. Instead of worrying about himself getting replaced, he's thinking, wait a minute, the entire company I lead could get completely ousted. And it is that kind of preventative, defensive, and offensive thinking that makes Alibaba what it is today. And that's why they are such a massive opportunity for online suppliers and retailers. Something really strange is happening in the world of retail. In a study called Fashion Online to Offline, Corsite Research unveiled fascinating data that has retail experts scratching their heads. Brands who began with brick and mortar are actually closing the retail shops and suffering the threat of bankruptcy. We've heard it, there's the huge brick and mortar apocalypse. But what most people don't realize yet is the brands who began online are now expanding to brick and mortar retail and enjoying exponential growth. What? The authors of the report put it like this, quote, the confluence of higher digital customer acquisition costs are declining. More flexible lease terms are supporting the online to offline migration. Let me break it down. The cost for running a digital ad like Google, Instagram, Facebook are going up. In fact, in just the last 12 months, they've gone up almost 200%. And with the closing of so many brick and mortar retail stores around the country, the cost for opening a new storefront is going down, which results in lease terms being more flexible. Corsite Research adds this quote, physical stores are a point of discovery for emerging brands. New stores are generating an average 45% lift in web traffic, according to an International Council of Shopping Center survey. This is unprecedented. Most people going around talking about how brick and mortar is over, and in one sense, this is true. But it is those stores that started online and now are expanding to offline, where you can actually walk into a brick and mortar retail store. Those are the ones that are tearing it up. And the question everyone's asking is why? But first, I want you to guess what city is the flagship for offline fashion brand discovery. Start spreading the news. You got it, it is New York. And I'd like to draw a simple example. One of the fashion brands, Just One Dime, will be running to Amazon sales for, just opened a storefront right next to Victoria's Secret in Los Angeles. Now this is a prime spot. What's crazy about it is previous storefronts in this location did an easy 300,000 a month. And that was on a bad month. Now I'm not at liberty to tell you the monthly lease cost, but let me just say it's dirty low. Now how did the fashion brand we are working with pull this off? The fashion brand moving out could not keep a profitable brick and mortar operation. Wait a minute, they started offline. They began back in the day when it really wasn't trendy to get your store online on a website. And the new fashion brand we're working with that's moving in is busting at the seams and they started online. Do you get my drift? Where you start matters now more than ever. A cosmetics brand in Sweden asked myself just one dime and one of my business partners if we have the ability to get their brand into brick and mortar retail stores in the US after we get their product online in the US. They get it. Let me cut the steak another way. Your business model has a bigger impact on your brand success than most entrepreneurs are willing to believe. And if the model ain't right, you will end up as tasty soup in the bowl of one of your competitors. So why is beginning online and then expanding to offline taking fire and dominating right now? I'll tell you exactly why. Because when you succeed online, you had to learn how to satisfy a customer and build brand loyalty without any physical touch point. No store to walk into, no aromas to whiff with your nose, no smiling faces to greet, no products to physically touch. And without any of these advantages, you learned how to build a brand. This is exactly why Just One Dime is being asked multiple times every single day, please, can you show me how to build my online brand? We'll take advantage of free training right now if you click below. You're gonna see that first link will give you 90 minutes of training teaching you how to get set up and started on this. Expanding from online to offline is kind of like going through Navy SEALs training and then being asked if you can handle being a security guard. You learned how to satisfy customers in the most challenging platform ever without ever being able to meet a single one of them. And now you're being asked to take that brand, put it into a physical brick and mortar retail store where people can see you and talk to you and you can actually create this ambiance like never before. And that is where the world is headed during the apocalypse of the brick 
and mortar. You are watching history being made. My only question is, are you ready? That's my 10 cents. If this content is helpful to you as you seek out to build a business that gives you margin, subscribe below. And if you have any questions at all, just ask below and I'm going to answer.